that you liked my last video, the one where I went into what did and didn't work when I was racing in Rwanda. So like, please do let me know what kind of content you want on here because basically I'm making these videos for you. So any kind of comments, feedback or suggestions are so, so important and so cool to receive. So keep those coming, leave any in the comments below. So today I am obviously back in Devon, I am at home and I am going to be doing a few little tweaks to my e-bike. I am going to be setting up my new WTB wheels. WTB do an e-bike specific wheel so they are stronger because the force that you put your e-bike through is so much more than with a regular bike. I'm stoked to get these because I've already broken a spoke on the ones that came on the bike. I love this bike. It feels so kind of solid but not in like a slow sluggish way it just feels really confidence inspiring and burly i guess burly is the word i'm wondering whether to take this to ride wind hill bike park at the weekend at wind hill um my favorite thing is to hit the big jumps but i don't know what it's going to feel like in the air so i just wonder like how is this going to feel compared to my analog bike i might bung both of them in the van and then i've got the option but to cut a long story short i'm going to set the bike up ride the new wheel set and then maybe see how this compares to the analog bike when i'm at windhill i don't know this is all being made up on the spot so let's check out the wheels <coughs> right then what have we got here i hope they remembered that my bike is a mullet so it's got two different size wheels on it We have got one 29er. That is a good start. Yay! <laughs> so here we go. I've got the WTB HTZ i30 e-bike specific wheel set. These are designed to be more durable than uh, a regular wheel set. These have actually got um, a symmetrical outer rim, as you can see, but I don't know if you can see. They've actually got asymmetrical spoke drillings. So the reason they do that is because it means that you can use equal length spokes and then they can have equal tension and that just gives a great strength throughout the whole wheel. They're 13 gauge single butted spokes. This is interesting. Have I got the right one? Yes, I have. They've got this thing called a heat sink and I'm gonna try and show you that a little better. The camera always tries to focus on my face. Focus on this camera. Can you see in there? So the heat sink, I'd never actually heard of one of these before. Is it something common that I've missed? Um, it's supposed to give a 10% improvement on heat dissipation when you're descending. It's right next to where you mount the rotor and uh, the rotor gets hotter as you're descending, as you pull the brakes on. The heat sink allows some of that heat to escape. Another e-bike specific change that WTB have made is they've increased the diameter of the outer axle sleeve. So it goes from 15 mil up to 70 mil on this wheel. So that means that you can still use the 12 millimeter through axle, but you've got greater stiffness because of the outer axle sleeve. So yeah, greater stiffness when you're cornering or pedaling. WTB have built in more strength by using a heat treated steel free hub body on their HTZ hub. So because of that extra strength, the six pole ratchet system is less likely to fail. You should have a longer lasting wheel set. As the rims are 20% thicker than WTB's other KOM rims, I wonder what the weight difference is. I'm actually gonna have to Google that because I don't know. Okay, so an HTZ i30 29er with Shimano MS would be um, 1.4 kilos. Anyway, I'm gonna have to finish this a bit later on because I've gotta go and pick up our many, many children from school. So I'll grab my tires and all my bits and bobs and then um, try and convince the children to go and do something else so that I can get on with setting my wheels up. Little prisoner. Hello, Betty. So they're all back now. Might hear some background noise, but let's see how quickly we can get these set up. The wheels come uh, ready taped and with valves already in them. So 
I'm just gonna put on some fresh tires. I've got the judge and I have got the verdict 29er. So let's get them on. Oh, thanks babe. It always goes one of two ways setting up tubeless. You do it first time or it's an absolute pain in the bum. So fingers crossed. Gonna work. I did not hear a pop, pop, pop. I got your bottom. <laughs> there is now a lightsaber fight going on in the garden, and I'm gonna try something new to get this tire on. So this is the ratchet strap trick. Uh oh. You all right? Yeah. You basically put this all the way around the tire, and it holds it on and gives it a bit of extra. Well, I don't know. Let's just hope it works, eh? I'm also going to remove the valve core so I can get a real uninhibited flow of air going in there. Yes! It worked! It worked! It worked! So pleased! Now obviously I've got no valve core in there, um, I just wanted to get it inflated so I'll take this off, put the valve core in and then reinflate it and woohoo! Well, finally about to finish off this build, uh, it's dragged on quite a bit because as with many bike um, makeovers, uh, you take one thing off and then find that it's not compatible or you're missing a bolt or you're missing a tool, blah 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 blah. So I was going to take the rotors and cassettes straight off the old wheels and put them on the new ones. But unfortunately, the old rotors are center lock. So I had to go and buy some six bolt rotors. And seeing as this is about e-bike upgrades, well, I thought I'd better get something nice. So I've got these Hope rotors. I really like Hope products. Uh, it's a British company and these are the floating ones. So they dissipate more heat than standard rotors. So coupled with the heat sink in the hub that I told you about earlier, I should have awesome stopping power uh, without the discs getting too hot. Um, and obviously you really need good stopping power on an e-bike because it weighs so much more than a standard bike. Anyway, I'm gonna put these on. I've got my Torx wrench, uh, they have to be up to five newton meters. I'm going to put the cassette on. Then I've got brand new lovely pedals, oil slick ones. I've got my new WTB saddle. And is that it? Is it then ready to go? I do so very much hope so. <laughs> potential faff comes with the rotors. I have heard from a reliable source that Hope rotors are a bit wider than other ones so I might have to file down part of the caliper, part of the mount where the caliper goes onto the fork. Slightly annoying. Um, but let's get these on and then hope I don't have to. I always have such a great fear of over tightening things because I always over tighten things. Ah, you know what I've just realised? <laughs> oh, damn, the, uh, the original rotors, the centre lock ones, they come with a magnet installed that's basically part of the speed sensor that connects up with the little e-bike computer. So, um, but you program into the Shimano e-bike head unit um, the size of your rear wheel and that's how it calculates how fast you're going and how much um of the motor it lets you use i think on my marin it's capped at 16 miles per hour or is it 16 kilometers per hour either way uh you need that magnet because without it the e-bike won't work so i'm gonna have to buy a second one that i can install on these rotors god damn it i told you there was always something i'm never gonna finish this video quite tricky to show you but you see the silver bolts they stick out more than the rotor so it just slightly catches there on the edge of the 
brake mount. Kind of bummed that I didn't know that this was an issue with these rotors. I did buy these from my local bike shop. Might have been nice if they'd have mentioned it or asked me what, what fork I was running. Because it's not just the Fox that this is an issue with. It's also the same with RockShox. Um, and I don't feel super confident or stoked on having to file that bit down. I'll see if I've got a suitable file. If not, I'm just going to put everything else on, show you the bike, and then I'll probably knit round to my friend Dan's house, and I can do that final bit of work on the bike there with him. Um, so I feel a bit more peace of mind that I'm not going to mess it up. I mean, it's irreversible, isn't it? So anyway, let's get the other stuff on and have a look at the bike. So the finishing touches of any bike makeover. I have got a fresh new saddle. This is the WTB. Coda with titanium rails. Why, thank you, friends. And I ordered myself a pair of oil slick pedals. I've got the DMR ones on my other bike and I absolutely love them, but I think they're about 120 quid. Didn't really want to spend that, so I found these nuke proof ones that were on sale at Wiggle. This is not a Wiggle advert, I'm just saying. They were half price, so let's get the shiny shoes on and see what the bike looks like. So there we go, all upgraded. Slightly annoying I've been working on this bike all week and I can't go and ride her immediately. I do need to sort out that magnet for the rear wheel. So I'm gonna have to order one because I don't have one. Plus there's the issue with the rotors, but that's easy to fix. So should be out on it before long. Let me know if you like the e-bike stuff. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but if you do like it, let me know and I'll make more of it. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you're doing really well and see you later. Bye.